So as you retire from public life, how should Alabamians remember Richard Shelley? Oh, I think that will be up to the people to decide that. Uh, I thought some of my opportunities were to help the state, help our state of Alabama, was education. Education is, is the key to all of it, the key to opportunity, the key to business success, the key to economic growth, uh, educated workforce, uh, scientists, engineers, uh, business people, uh, people with ideas and resolve and all this. So I uh, put a lot of effort in um, um, funding our science and engineering schools, starting in our college universities, at the University of Alabama and Tuscaloosa, Auburn University, uh, University of South Alabama, University of Alabama and Birmingham, Biomedical, which is the University of Alabama and Huntsville. And why did, was that my interest? Because that brings in the top teachers. The top teachers make good students, and it attracts good students. Good students have ideas and create a better economic base uh, and opportunity for our state. The other thing, the other aspect of things that I have worked on uh, is infrastructure, the Port of Mobile. Uh, I was in Singapore one time, and they, would, they showed me how what a great port it was. Transshipment, this is 20, 20 years ago at least. And it's one of the great ports of the world, and they do a lot of transshipment. And what were they doing? They were showing me how they were deepening the harbor mm -hmm. to ha so they could have the largest and biggest ships in the world come into Singapore because the harbor, you know, and others, they do this. And I thought of Mobile, and I didn't know how deep the harbor was, 42 feet, I think it was, mm -hmm. average something. And I started working on that with my staff. And I said, you know, if Mobile was, what, 11th or 12th in the nation, is tonnage and right. so forth, there's a port. I said, it could be better. So I worked on that 14 years to try to get uh, uh, upward, all of it, a billion dollars to deepen the harbor and modernize the port and everything. And uh, that's going to happen. It's happening now. It's not there yet. And... Uh, uh, but that's just an example of infrastructure that will help the whole state, not just Mobile, not just Baldwin County, but the whole region. January the 6th, yeah. wow, we were all here. <laughs> we saw the vice president abruptly move. You're looking right up, presiding over the Senate, regular order. You know, we're going through the seating of uh, getting the presidential race out of the way, which I voted to, uh, to do, you know, move on with it. And all at once I see the vice president move out. And I thought, well, I wonder if the president's called him or something. Mm -hmm. Nobody told us him. This went on 20, 30 seconds. We've talked about this before. About 20, 30 seconds later, uh, Chuck Grassley, who was president pro tem of the Senate, then he goes and presides over the Senate on the Constitution. 20, 30 seconds later, all at once, I think it was the FBI SWAT team came in real abruptly. The doors open. See, we were quiet where we were. We were going over, we were proceeding in the Senate. And I, he's right there this close to my desk putting his machine gun together. Mm -hmm. He said, get down. Get down. Everybody get down. The FBI I said, wow, what the hell's going on? Wow. Everybody else? So we, I didn't get down on the floor, but I got stuck now. I'm tall, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought, wow, I knew it was real then. And then, then you could hear the commotion. Yeah. And then within two or three minutes, they said, we got to get out of here. We marched out with a heavy guard over from there under the tunnel to the Hart building next door, two doors over. Were we concerned? Yeah. We were concerned about the nation first. We, we were safe, basically. We thought, but I thought, I never thought I'd see that in America. Democrats, uh, you made the transition in 1994. 94. Now they they started in 81, Reagan on me. Graham, uh, they, if you look back in the papers, they were trying to get me the whole party in Alabama changed party. I was still in the House. Right. This went on for 12 years. 12 years. Oh, they went on Reagan from oh, the whole party. The the Democratic Party in the South was beginning to go through realignment. Right. You know, and so uh, uh, they tr 
told me, well, the leader, it's all been in the papers uh, and at the White House. So, uh, and I told him I was going to try to make the Democratic Party more responsible, mm -hmm. more conservative. And I remember Reagan told me he wished me a lot of luck because he'd been a Democrat. He said all of his life till they raised taxes to 90 percent and then he left them. But uh, so I was in the vanguard of, of the realignment in the state of, of the Republican Party. Uh, most effective president that uh, you've uh, served. Most, that I've served under? Yeah. Most effective? Probably Reagan. Wow. Reagan, well, he knew how to get things done. He could talk to you. He, he had a good feel for things. He had, uh, uh, he, he had some good times, too. He had, had one bad recession brought on, but he had some good times. Second one would be President Bush Sr. He got caught up in that Ross Perot thing with Clinton. Clinton was a politician, too, but uh, he understood the world. In the 2017 U.S. Special Senate election, um, you played a pivotal role in that. Talking about Roy Moore. Talking about Roy Moore. Wow, I knew that would come up. Okay. Got well, on a record. Who did you vote for? You said I was going to write did, that or write in. I didn't say. I said I vote. I, I wrote in the name of a distinguished Republican. I've never said, and I won't say today. But I, it was a distinguished Republican. Somebody people have a lot of respect for, and uh, so I knew I wasn't going to vote for for Doug Jones. Although I like Doug Jones, he's a, he's a friend. I've known him a long time, uh, and I worked with him up here, but. Uh, uh, I thought, and I think rightfully so, that Roy Moore was just too much, and, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't been good for the Republican Party up here. He wouldn't be good for Alabama in the long run. Um, so I did what I did. Um, uh, I think it made a difference. Did you ever flirt with the idea of running for governor? Flirt with it. I think it was 93, you'll go dig it up, I think that the Mason-Dixon people, they got, there were some people trying to get me to run for governor as a Democrat or a Republican. I believe it would have been the, maybe, I forget, 94 race or something. And I, it's in my paper somewhere, they showed me. I thought about it, but I was in the U.S. Senate and I, uh, thought I could best do best for the state up here. Final days here, what are you doing? What, what am I doing? Yeah. Well, you can see I'm taking things down and packing things up. Uh, I am, but with the help of <laughs> all my staff, they mean, meaning they're doing most of the work. Uh, but I've got a lot on my plate because of the omnibus, you know, the funding of the government. I'm right involved in it, it's my staff on the on the appropriation committee and right involved in it and we'll be tied up until Christmas I guess hoping we fund the government just hope we have a good good month in December I don't think a lot will happen between now till after the Georgia race I, I never thought we had a sterling chance to take over the Senate because we had two-thirds of, uh, of the seats up you know to defend and I think that uh, we had some candidates that, that uh, I wish we had had others in different states. You read about it and you see about it. And uh, I think the quality of the candidate matters. I think the intensity of the campaigns matter. I think uh, sometimes they, the Republicans may have uh, overestimated themselves in the race and underestimated the, the Democrats. Democrats always have a good ground game and they seem to have here. What concerns or thoughts do you have about uh, President Trump running again for re-election in 2020? Well, that would be up to him. Uh, the, uh, the president uh, uh, didn't think fared so well in his uh, backing of some of the candidates this year. But <coughs> that's an election. Uh, what the president does, the former president does in the future, we don't know. And we don't know how people will do. Politics is... Uh, uh, here today and gone tomorrow. You know, everyone I talk to, from Chamber of Commerce types, the public officials, they say that they're worried that we're going to lose federal money when, with your retirement. 
or appropriations, the clout, what you brought to the table there after you retire. What do you think Alabama will lose when you retire? Well, I, I don't know that uh, Alabama will, will you know, uh, the, the investment, that's what I call it, that we've been able, and the state's put up some of this money too, uh, in Alabama in infrastructure and education and so forth, uh, will pay off for years to come. Years. It's not, uh, you know, just giving somebody a one-time deal, give them a handout, and you know, and it's gone. This is investment, and uh, what'll happen after I'm gone? I, I, it takes a while to build seniority and power base here, and I've been fortunate that way. But uh, I think you have a, a, a young senator coming up, and Katie Britt, that's uh, loaded with potential, knows what's going on. Uh, worked right here in this same office um, will be, I think, very uh, adept at the needs of Alabama and fight to get them. I also thank Senator Tuberville. Is, uh, he's been working with me the last two years and uh, he, it's, it's a new arena to him, you know. He, he was a teacher, a coach and all this, but uh, I think he's working the state hard, got a great staff and uh, so I think Alabama will do fine. You've been a politician for over 50 years. Once it gets into the blood, are you just you retire? You go away? You, are you gonna? How, how will you? How will I go away? How well, will you withdraw from? Well, we all fade away, yeah. you know, sooner or later. I, I I plan to be a private citizen. Yeah. Remember Cincinnatus, the great Roman soldier. Right. He won all the battles. I think before Caesar or something. Right. And then he went back to farming. They couldn't believe it. You know, the Cincinnati okay. Society and all this. Right. Uh, I'll I just be a private citizen. I, it'll be a change, but I think uh, I'll adjust to it. You're going to go down to the Tuscaloosa City Council meeting and raise cane with Mayor Maddox, sir? I, mean, I won't do that, but I know, I know a lot of those people and their friends and, and some of them neighbors and so forth. But uh, I plan to be a private citizen, read books and give no advice. <laughs>